Hello and welcome to the Board Breakdown Podcast, another lowdown show. And this one is on Sam Greenwood. Uh, Sam's joined Borough on a season-long loan from Leeds United. And Dana, another sign into the ranks, sign number 11. Um, you've been doing your research on Sam Greenwood. Uh, what do you think we can expect from him? Yeah, well, he's a 21-year-old attacking midfielder slash striker slash winger, so I think we can safely categorise him as an attacker. He started out at Sunderland, um, made the step up to the under-18s, age 15. He joined Arsenal's academy after that in 2018 inside pro terms there in 2019 before joining Leeds in the summer of 2020. He does have a decent returns record, uh, youth level, six goals, six assists in 15 appearances for Sunderland under-18s, 15 goals, six assists in 39 appearances for Arsenal under 18s and then 22 goals, six assists in 43 appearances for Leeds under 21s. Um, going back ever so slightly, he did get 12 goals in 14 appearances for England under 17s. So having a look at him, it's really difficult to land on an overall opinion on him, which doesn't help for these low down videos because Jesse Marsh played him as a midfielder and Greenwood himself said in the first interview that he had with Borough that it was something to do with the counter-pressing. So a very interesting one, but looking at his games, he is played in that position. And I think it's very safe to say that he likely won't be played in that position for Borough. I mean, feasibly he could be because Carrick does like that flexibility, but I think there's other positions that he will be considered in before that. For example, striker and then potentially on the wing as well. But I think we will station him initially as a number 10, as we saw the other day, playing that maybe second striker kind of role, because his finishing, at least from his youth record, is pretty decent. It's just about how can he translate that to the senior team. A little bit like Alex Gilbert, except obviously Greenwood is further down the development ladder because he has had... Premier League experience and he's had football league experience but still hasn't quite really come to the party in terms of senior teams so that's going to be very interesting to see whether we can see a little bit more of him in regards to his attributes from youth level i.e that finishing probably his dead ball um, speciality in senior football as well so he's a very interesting one I think Leeds fans will say the same as well about Sam Green with these quite an interesting type of player yeah it's definitely a, an interesting deal for us as well I think that and there's another loan uh, in in the building and how is he going to fit and where is he going to fit uh, what I do like about the deal is that he is flexible you know in terms of he can play up front he can play a 10 he can play on the wing he can play in centre defensive midfield where Jesse Marsh um played him but you know I was very <laughs> intrigued uh where why Jesse Marsh played him in that position as well and um, you know they did lose um a couple of key players within that team when he was asked to play that position um and I thought he did relatively quite well in the lead side which massively underperformed last year and you know that when we look at the, the deal itself, I was surprised that we were able to to probably bring him in because he was quite highly thought of at Leeds at the time. And you know, mm-hmm. the, I, know, I know he came from, from Sunderland, of course, and he's he's been subject to bids as a, as, as a youth player. So when Leeds did sign him, there was a bit of excitement around the deal. Um, and we forget that he's played at the top level. He's, he's been playing uh, games at a, at a very, very good level as well. So for him to drop down a division, I think that is always a bonus. And I'd be interested to see what we do um, with him, I think the the withdrawn strike uh, role or slash number ten could suit him probably more than what it suits um, M- Morgan Rogers. I think Rogers for me is definitely a profile as a winger. Where Sam Greenwood's played in central positions for the majority of his career, really centre forwards, uh, attack midfielder, and also in defence midfield. So he's had that central feeling for a long, long time. So I feel like that could be really beneficial for him to play in that role. Um, whereas Rogers has played wide, then got moved to a centre forward. Yeah. But I still think that a wing is probably his best position. But we we think that Leeds fans are hopefully going to be positive in the in the move, Dana. But you have been looking at the forums and what do you think they've been saying about him? Yeah, before I get into that actually, um hmm. I think the the thing to know probably the biggest attribute of Sam Greenwood is his dead ball deliveries. Now, I 
would be worried if I was Sam Greenwood because we will coach that right out of him. And if Leeds <laughs> had any sort of um, idea about how we do that to players, then they would not have sent him here because then he'll probably go back to Ellen Road if indeed he does. And he probably won't be able to kick a ball for to save his life. So um, that is interesting. I think Borough have been burned before by bringing in players that supposedly have good deliveries from corners and free kicks, and we haven't quite seen it. Now, I will say that it's probably just as important in how his teammates attack the ball as it is him delivering it. So definitely one to keep an eye on. And very interesting that Leeds have actually let him go because this is a championship to championship club loan. So I just think that's quite interesting too, but probably not as interested as, as I'm trying to make it out to be. But yeah, the Leeds fans, a little bit like how I said earlier, are a little bit, um, I won't say confused is the word, but intrigued about Sam Greenwood. One of them said that he's watched a lot of him in the under-21s where he stood out along with a few more after their call-ups, I guess, to the first team. They've all struggled. Sam isn't blessed with pace and is awful at backtracking. <laughs> That's great. On the other hand, he's a dead ball specialist, which we don't have. Going out on loan would be the best thing for him, in my opinion. This was said just before his move to Middlesbrough was, was confirmed. Another one said that his reputation as a dead ball player was well known before he arrived, specifically free kicks. He had taken a few for the first team before today and it came to nothing. Again, I will say that just because... Uh, player hasn't registered an assist or anything from a free kick doesn't exactly mean that the free kick or the set piece is bad although we, we see it a lot with Borough that they are bad um, but he, he goes on to say eventually he was always likely to do something from a set piece but even in the under 20s uh, under 21 sorry his all round game wasn't particularly special never stood out like Geld Hart did or Somerville or even Jack Clark who made that level look easy so a little bit of a difference of opinion there um, between those two foreign posters and then the final one that I picked out said that he is a player that has never really stood out again fitting into that narrative uh, he won't be a regular starter unless we have injuries and all the talk about dead ball specialist question mark I'm not sure I would use the word specialist I haven't seen him produce many moments of class from his deliveries if he goes or even stays I wish him all the best though I'm going to counter that with some positivity because watching a bit of him his technique is really good. His technique from open play and from set pieces is really very good. And I think if Borough are wanting him to kind of hang out wide at times and spread the ball over to the other flank, then he's very good at doing that. So I am, yeah, I'm going to dress it up a little bit more positively and say that his technique is is really good. Definitely something that I noticed watching a few of his clips. Well, it's interesting because he only signed a new contract at Leeds United last summer um, to the 2026. So he has a number of years left at his deal. He's still very, very young and he can still develop. You know, I think what's interesting where you see these comparisons with Gelda and then also Jack Clark as well, both flair players in very attacking positions where he's kind of been told to do multiple things. And sometimes standing yeah. out isn't always the best thing in the world you know some of the best players don't need to stand out to be honest you know, they just, just need to be there and be in the right positions right to be honest with that i think a reason why he hasn't stood out is because he has been played in many different positions he came through the mm -hmm. academy level as a striker then has been played further back then has been played even further back from that so it's like how can you expect a player to stand out if they haven't really found their home in terms of a position. So if Borough play him as that second striker and play him there consistently, maybe we will see him start to stand out. I think he's probably been a, a victim of his own versatility. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I um, absolutely agree. I mean, but what a great thing to have, you know, if you can play multiple positions like some of Borough players already have, it's kind of building a nice player flexibility so we can change systems mm -hmm. if things aren't working like they aren't now. Um, but let's get another perspective then. So we spoke to Adonis uh, from the Roar and Peacock podcast. A time now about Boris new number 29. Hiya, Johnny. Uh, so thoughts on Sam Greenwood. I think it's an unusual move for him to go. I th we need midfielders. And I think that his probably, probably his greatest strength is attacking, attacking midfield. So... I think given that we're Leeds United, we're looking for a few more midfielders in that sort of area, then I think it's a bit unusual for him to go. But obviously, he doesn't seem to be in Farker's plans. So 
um, and he needs he needs regular first team football. I've seen him a lot in the under twenty ones, and he was prolific there, mainly as a striker. He worked well with um, Joe Gelhart, and they were they were scoring basically a goal a game between them. Uh, but I've seen him score many many goals. He's a natural finisher, left foot, right foot, set pieces, takes very good corners, very good free kicks. I think that that was the first kind of thing that we sort of uh, noticed when he started playing for the under-21s was his proficiency at free kicks You'd sort of and, and corners. You'd sort of see him take a really great free kick. It hit the bar, just like the one at Salford. Uh, but you know the next free kick, we'd get maybe it'd be on the other end, or the edge of the box, and he'd take it with his left foot. So uh, yeah, he's an interesting player, full of talent. It's never really worked out the first team at Leeds, but he was played as a defensive midfielder in the Premier League by Jesse Marsh, which I, I don't think helped him at all. Um, he's generally he was a striker at under twenty one level, so. Uh, I don't know how you're going to use him. Uh, but yeah, weaknesses, obviously, a little bit of inexperience. And being played out of position hasn't really helped. So yeah, I guess it's it just depends on how he's going to fit in. But you've got a really exciting player there. If he can replicate any of the form that he showed at youth level... Um, he'll be brilliant for you. Uh, you. You should be excited. I'd have wouldn't have too many expectations, but you, you should have high hopes for him. And yeah, uh, I hope he does really well for you. Thank you very much, uh, Adonis. And you know they did pay one point five million rising to three for him as well. So you know he, th- there is it was and was excitement for him when he first joined and he's taken a little bit of time to to get up to speed at Leeds but again what we've been mentioning that versatile versatility and also playing multiple positions probably started that but then we come to the most important part of these lowdown videos uh, of the ranking out of five um where do you see uh this deal ranking i'm gonna go with uh three kind of somewhat lukewarm on it he has to get us excited, obviously, with his performances, and I'd like to hope that he will. I do like how he's ambidextrous. He's both thought he doesn't have a weak foot. I think that's really good in terms of if he's in positions to finish, you won't see, like how we saw Latilath try to take the ball back onto his right foot against um, QPR for one of the chances in the first half. I think you'll probably see Greenwood, again, if, if he does get into those goal-scoring opportunities, be able to either use his left or his right, and I think that's a very, very good attribute for a footballer to have. Um, I wish that I was the same. I think everyone that likes football wishes that they were both footed. But um, yeah, I'm I'm going to go with a with a three. Yeah, he's definitely spent a lot of time kicking the ball against the wall just to try and uh, work his touch <laughs> on both feet. Definitely, yeah. I'm all left footed, so I mean, he's uh, he's much better than me on that front. But um, yeah, I would echo your thoughts. I want to be a three, but I think he can be exciting and can really maybe change a lot of perceptions um, this season. I think that he just needs game time, like a lot of players do. If you have a run of games, you start to get better, you start to get momentum and all that kind of fun stuff. Interesting to see how we play him, and that will probably dictate how this signing will rank over the season goes on. But yeah, for me, it's a three signing. There's clearly quality there. Can we unlock it? That's the, mm. that's the, the question that we probably have to leave people with. Can we unlock this player's quality. Let's see. We've got a good record over the last couple, over the last season of doing so with these type of players. Hopefully, we can do the same with Sam Greenwood. Um, but Dana, thank you very much uh, for joining me. As always, to listeners and the viewers, thank you very much for watching and liking uh, this video. Um, yeah, do like, do subscribe, do all the fun stuff, help get charted and review this podcast. It's all fun and games. Uh, but for right now, it's been the Board Breakdown podcast, and that was always Sam Greenwood chatter in a pod. Up the Board Breakdown.